after Anita and me, you've had so many different diverse roles and kind of think that perhaps is your USP, you know, turning your hand to anything drama, comedy, from Broadchurch to playing Judge Sonia Sharma. Um, what was it like being part of event TV in a way? Is Broadchurch be was kind of it became an event at the time and being cast in the second season, did you feel that you were part of this national event? It, yeah, it did. I mean, it wasn't a huge part, but it did feel great to be on that set and be part of something. You're right, event TV, and we don't have much of that now. We have so many channels, but actually we did then, I suppose, mm -hmm. but it overcame that. It really was a... And, and you know, the, the great thing was that the, was working with Jess Hobbs, who I mm -hmm. hope is here tonight, but um, that's where I first met Jess. And, um, and then she later on cast me in the split. So it's funny how these things can lead on to one another. But what was great, because I was, I was a judge, so you know you only really saw my top half. I had pyjamas on underneath the desk. <laughs> I really did. And, um, but I got to watch some amazing actors at work. Um, and that is one of the things I love being on a, on a set for. Um, you know, it's, there's just so much time to watch the different way that people work and the various, it's just like a huge family of departments that come together to make this kind of magical thing that's happening. But it's the, it's the difference in approaches that some people can just be chit chit chatting and then just turn it on like that. And you go, how the hell do you do that? How do you go from doing a fart joke to doing that <laughs> scene where you're just crying? How do you do it? That ability is incredible. Because I'd come from theater and I came to screen much later and play this huge ro range of diverse roles in theater that I was never offered in television. <laughs> That took a lot longer to catch up. Um, and there you have weeks of rehearsal and you have your warm up and, you know, it's, a, it's an event that is live and it has a beginning, middle and end. And you're sort of so in there the minute you step on stage and the real and it took me ages to learn this. But one of the crafts of great screen actors is holding that immediacy while everything else is going on, while your mic's been adjusted and there's a three hour delay and you're sitting in your trailer and the light was wrong on that one or whatever, but to be able to reach down each time. And then the really brilliant ones will do that and give you something slightly different on each take. Wow. I mean, that's great to watch. And how do you do it? I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the A, B, C, which one do you want? Um, I'm still learning. Uh, you know, I look back at some of the stuff I've done and go, Jesus, that was bad. Uh, but I really, I mean, you know, I never went to drama school. I just been incredibly lucky and, and learned, I've been worked with great people that have helped me just being one of them. Um, and just learned on the job. Um, but that's the chicken and egg situation. That's a frustration, you know, if you don't get the work, how do you get better? You know, you can write and write and write, even if no one's buying your work, you can still write as an actor. What are you without an audience? <laughs> um, but it is that thing and, um, I found that very frustrating when I was younger mm. uh, and trying to get those even middle-sized roles and thinking, how am I going to get better if you don't give us a chance? How do we reach the stage where we can play a King Lear or, you know, a, a Desdemona or a Lady Macbeth? How do we get there unless we just ha we have the chance to fail and flex our muscles? Um, so that's why I learned on the job. Mm. and made lots of mistakes on the way, still learning. You never stop learning, actually, ever. You've spoken about working in theatre a lot, but also the diversity of roles, mm. the diver diversity of choice that you were given in theatre mm. that sometimes you're not afforded on screen. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that it was far more open for you? I think theatre has always been way ahead in terms of opening out casting and maybe they feel there's more suspension of disbelief the minute you you know sit down and walk and uh, sit down in a theater mm. space your head is m much more prepared to accept pushing of boundaries i i don't know but it was you know my first decade as an actress i played a peruvian millionaire a 17th century essex deaf mute mm. uh manchester united fan i mean uh <laughs> blood wedding i mean just so many things mm. And nothing that tied them together other than this incredible diversity. And then I went for tele auditions and it was arranged marriage <laughs> or, you know, mother, shopkeeper, whatever. And it was really stark. And that is, of course, why I started writing, just that frustration mm -hmm. that none of those, 
none of the roles I was being offered was anything like the diversity and the strength and the complexity of the women that I, I knew and that I thought I was. So that's a good reason to start writing, is being fucking angry. Yeah. <laughs> you just go, I'm going to, I'm going to change the world. Um, but Maya Angelou said, if you, know, if, you, if you don't see the book you want, write it. Mm -hmm. And I was so aware that actors don't really have much power. It all starts with the script. You know, very few people will turn down a, a, an amazing script because they don't come along very often. So th I thought that is the way forward. If we're going to change the way we think about things and how we're seen and how we're cast, just try and create the work. And how do you write? Do you write every day still? Do you have a kind of writing? Do you have a habit? Um, it depends. There's nothing like a late deadline to make you sit <laughs> down and write. Um, but also because I, I really started writing more full time after I'd had my, my daughter because I just didn't want to be on the road anymore. I wanted to be more at home. Um, and also paying for childcare is a fantastic spur for your creativity. It's like I'm paying the nanny how much? Yes. I better write something. Um, so that's, yeah, I think when I'm, I don't have a particular pattern. Um, I write, I tend to have quite a long thinking period, which looks like I'm not doing anything. I am really, I really am. Um, and then I will sit down and, you know, really just not do anything else and get a bit obsessed and, and get it down. But kind of depends on the project, really.